promotional consideration paid for by the following. Webster Ace Hardware and Farm Supply are generous sponsors for today's podcast. They have been a family-owned business for 27 years. This helpful hardware store sells items such as archery, Ariat clothing and boots, Wrangler jeans, case knives, Hammond's candies, and live fishing. They also have a full selection of hardware, RV supply, propane, Ben Moore, Royal and Clark, and Kennington paints. You need a barn or fencing job done? Custom barn kits and roofing metal are provided at your local Ace Hardware store. What about a new grill for the yard? Traeger, Big Green Egg, Weber, and Blackstone are found here, along with all the accessories to go with it. Stock up your workshop with DeWalt, Milwaukee, or Craftsman Tools. They've got you covered. Remember to go to Ace.com to shop their entire line to have items shipped directly to the store. All right, welcome back to another edition of the Go Blaze Show. I'm your host, Billy Goble, and uh, it's great to have you guys back. Um, today's guest is a great friend of mine. Uh, I've known him all my life, and um, he is uh, a voice that you've probably heard uh, more than once. And so today, the man behind the uh, voice of your Raider Radio um uh, crew is none other than Mr. Mike Foot. Mike, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you, brother Billy. I appreciate it. How's it going? It's going great. It's going like, great. Hey, I'm retired. <laughs> Couldn't get any better than that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, Miss Judy, keeping you busy? Oh, always. Always. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean, what do you what are you doing? What's a, what's a day like in the in Mr. Well, Foots, I'm actually semi-retired. I work part time yeah. for the uh, the Hope Center Ministries uh, thrift store. Gotcha. I work over there 25 hours a week. I don't always get 25 hours in because I'm I'm retired. Right. right. <laughs> but I work over there and, and kind of you know trying to keep that place uh, uh, going as good as it has been for years. And and then I'm at home with my man cave and I try to hang out there as much as I can and uh, right. tinker and do stuff. And right. Of course, I have a lot of help uh, building the man cave to begin with, and yeah. then, uh, my extension I had help doing that too. So that's cool. It's it's good. Yeah, you got uh, um, you guys have a, a, a beautiful home. It's a it's an old it's an older older West Webster home. Um, <laughs> 1912. Uh, 1912. Yeah. Yep. So you celebrated the hundredth anniversary of it not too long ago. Yep. Um, it's a, like I said, beautiful. You and Judy have done a great job with it. Um, and I, the man cave's coming along good. Yeah, we got an extension to it now. <laughs> I got I got to go check it out. I, I get to check it out mostly every Christmas Eve. Exactly. I get to come over there um, as an honorary adoptee of the <laughs> Foot Huggins Coleman Parker family. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if I left anybody out. Um, um, so let's in any other like episode I ever do, I always I always go back to. The beginning to the beginning because that's where every chapter starts where every book starts movie whatever you want to watch it always starts at the beginning right so let's go back then um tell us a little bit about yourself are you uh are you from this area no i actually was uh from south florida okay a, a city kid uh, so much city i thought green beans came in a can i didn't know you okay. actually grew them that's until right. i moved to webster <laughs> <laughs> till you met the huggins and, and worked for the coleman's and fussels <laughs> out in the field right yeah, right yeah so uh no I'm, I'm from delray beach grew up down there i think your dad's from miami right no he um we have family in miami okay. my dad's from Tam well grew up in tampa but he's originally he was born in chicago okay yeah okay. Well, near, near that area like gotcha. midwest gotcha but no south florida delray beach uh uh, my folks divorced when I was in first grade, gotcha. and so I lived with my mother down there, and my dad moved up to Central Florida. Gotcha. And then as he uh, uh, went through his teaching progression, he actually got the job as a principal at Webster Elementary in the summer of 1968. Okay. And so I, uh, over the years, I came up to his house in the summertime and played baseball for him. And, uh, of course, he knew more about baseball than I'll ever know. <laughs> right. And especially the one thing he taught me was if you don't know how to play very well, you're not very good, make sure you know the rules. Right. So I've always prided myself on knowing all the rules of baseball. And I, and I try to make sure and, and teach that to kids that I coach over the years. Uh, if you're not sure about something, ask me. I'll, I'll try to help you out. <laughs> right. And so, you know, by knowing the rules, I think it makes a, a, a student a better player. Right. 
but that uh, moved up here. I moved up here in February of '71. Gotcha. And uh, a lot of something a lot of people don't know about me. I was actually a high school dropout in really? South Florida. Yes. Really. I went to uh, I went to tenth grade my first year of tenth grade. And I passed driver's ed and phys ed. Wow. <laughs> Oddly enough, the things I was interested the in. The two eds. Yeah. And, and the rest <laughs> of the day, I was uh, either at the beach or playing pool in the pool hall with my buddies because we skipped school all the time. Yeah. And uh, not proud of it, but it's the way life was. So my second year of 10th grade, when I found out I was retained, I went to school until December. And I told my mother, I said, I'm not going back. I was 16 years old. So I'm not going back to school. I said, I'm going to quit. If you don't let me, I'll just do something else. Right. So she said, okay. So about February, she got tired of me just doing nothing. She called my dad, who was the principal at Webster, and said, you need to take this boy. He's heading in the wrong direction. <laughs> so uh, sure enough, I came up on a train. Yeah. My dad picked, him up, picked me up at Wildwood at the depot and brought me home. And... Uh, I thought, boy, this can be great. Live with my dad, get to play baseball, watch baseball, all kinds of stuff. And the third day, he came in and woke me up. He said, hey, get up, son. I said, well, we going somewhere? He said, yep, I'm going to work, and you're going to South Sumter. <laughs> nice. And he sent me to school. So I got nice. here in my 10th grade year uh, in February. So I wasn't eligible for any sports that year. Gotcha. But I did go out and watch baseball play and, and got to know uh, Big O, the coach, Charles Iwald. And uh, and got you know really interested in wanting to be a member of the team. So the next year, uh, is my junior year, I did play. I played football for Dale Swain. I played basketball for Virgil Stewart, and I played baseball for Charles Oswald. And so, uh, interestingly enough, uh, in football, I was a backup quarterback to Timmy Morgan and a backup safety to Bud Fussell. So I got wow. to go in when the games were out of hand, one way or the other. And uh, wow. when our C, my junior year, we were five, four, and one. And the one game we tied was Tavares' game, in which uh, your dad and I met at the punter at the same time. And I'm pretty sure he's the one that blocked it, but he blocked the punt. Wow. But neither one of us could pick it up and go score. <laughs> we fumbled that ball around, fumbled, finally just, I think your dad fell on it, said, to heck with it, let's just get it. <laughs> so we got a block punt. And uh, and in that game, I also had my only interception of my career. Wow. Uh, and so uh, it, it, that was, you know, my junior year. Uh, I got to play one time at quarterback at Eustis, and my only pass of my high school career, I threw an interception to Eustis. Gotcha. So I, I was not a great <laughs> – uh, football player, needless to say, basketball. I was like the seventh guy on the, right. on the court. Right. Uh, I did score nine points one time in the game against Claremont. So wow. I was proud of that. But Coach go. Stewart went ballistic when I threw a hook shot. I looked like a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, <laughs> and I made it. Yeah. But he didn't like it. He said, "Don't you ever do that again." Nobody's ever going to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So my dad uh, wants me to bring up this uh, a story about you and I think Mount Dora coming in at quarterback. Can you? Um, he 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 made me promise that I would. I said, Dad, please don't get me hurt on the show, please. <laughs> yeah, interestingly enough, he would bring that up. Well, I, I don't know. I guess offensive linemen don't like quarterback, or they didn't like this quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> because we were uh, late in the game. We were winning on a beautiful uh, flea flicker we had. Uh, I think the pass was thrown to Jitter Akins, and he flipped it back to Bud Fussell. He went down the sideline untouched, and we ended up winning that game. But we were so far ahead, I got to go in at quarterback, and uh, – for some reason, they did uh, an offensive line lay down <laughs> on the snap, <laughs> and we were in a wishbone offense. Oh, no. Of course, I got the ball and go back to give the ball to somebody, and there was nobody there. The offensive line just stepped aside, and I got pile-drived <laughs> by all the defensive linemen. They crushed me. And so that was a, oh, that was oh. a big deal. They loved that. They laughed and carried on. That was a, yeah, thanks, Greg, for bringing that up. <laughs> what was that? Was that like an initiation thing, or is that just be, we just don't? I mean, like, I can't I, imagine them not liking you. Yeah, you know well, what I'm saying? I don't, you know, city kid from out of town, first year in the program. <laughs> We're going to show this city yeah. city slicker how we yeah. do it here in the yeah. nail. He didn't grow up with us. Let's pummel him one time. <laughs> but so, he's on your team. 
Yeah, I know, I know. And uh, what were you like, Ronnie Banks, Sunshine? Like, <laughs> Sunshine. Yeah, yeah, except I wasn't flipping them over my shoulder. <laughs> they they knocked me down and fell on me. So, oh my god. Yeah, I, I I'm glad he brought that up. That was a great memory. <laughs> yeah, he told me he says, yeah, you got to ask Mr. Foot when you have him on about the and the, and I was like. And I'm like half listening because I was like, he's going to tell me the real story what happened. But he said it was, uh, and I don't remember if my dad was, my dad was, yeah, my dad had to be, had to be there playing, right? He was, yeah. yeah, he was he, a senior. Yeah. He, um, he said it was, it was one of the things I'll never forget. Yep. You know? Yep. They, they initiated me, that's for sure. So you had, um, you had, uh, Coach Harris. Was it Coach Harris or Coach Swain? Swain. Swain. Swain, yeah. Swain. So well, I think, I'm trying to think of when Harris was there. Was that that might have been like middle school, junior high? Sam Harris. Yeah, my yeah, dad said yeah. he had him for a coach. He, yeah, he was our assistant principal when I went to okay. South Sumter. Yeah, gotcha. Mr. Brooks was a principal. Sam Harris was assistant principal. My dad would do impressions of Mr. Harris. All the oh time. yes, and I got and he was spot on. <laughs> and, and and you know what's funny is um, I I I got to like you know be around him. Um, he was. Believe it or not, a substitute teacher. Yeah. Later on in life, <laughs> in his twilight years, uh, he came to Webster. And I, I think I was in f- third or fourth grade. I think it was, and and um, he came and uh, subbed, and he was the nicest guy. Mm. And um, I later found out that was the same guy. And I'm like that guy. <laughs> That's the guy. <laughs> but um, my dad would always. Eh. Uh, I don't know what he called him, knucklehead or something like. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh, my dad, he cracks me up. Was, yeah, Sam, Sam was a good guy. He, had, uh, it was Jitter and Terry Aiken's stepdad, and we all called him Pop. Pop. You know, because we we hung around together and uh, in school and stuff. And yeah. and uh, old Pop was always there. He was a he was a good guy. Well, he told us uh, that he lived in the big white house right right behind you guys. Right behind me. Yes, yep. that's right. Yep. Yeah, and I thought I was like, man. Like, I don't know why, like, when you're little, well, not re- really when you're little, but you establish your thoughts with money. Like, when you're like, you got a big house, you, then you must I'm be like, rich. And yeah. then I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why is he here as a substitute teacher? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, <laughs> what? Times are really hard, or yeah. you just don't care, or what? Exactly. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, Sam Harris and um, uh, Coach uh, Del Swain, um, my dad. My dad talks about a story about how one time he, um, and he tells it better than I do, but he was talking about how he wanted to drive to a, I think Umatilla. Um, and Umatilla's baseball, this is during baseball season, and Umatilla doesn't have their baseball field at the, at the school. It's uh-huh. at the, like a community park or whatever. Right. But he didn't know that. And so he's like, yeah, I'm going to go, you know, go do stuff before the game. I'm going to drive. And, um, Coach Swain's like, yeah, you can drive, whatever, just don't be late. And uh, my dad went to the high, to the high school, and there's no there's no baseball field there. <laughs> and he goes, oh my god, <laughs> like it's crunch time, like he's gonna be late, you know. Yeah. And uh, finally, he realizes. I think he said he asked somebody, and they're like, no, the field's down that way or whatever. And he finally gets there, and Swain benched him for. No, Oswald. Uh, oh, was Oswald? Yeah, Oswald was baseball. Os- yeah. Oswald. Yeah. I forgot who it was, but yeah, he said he said <laughs> whoever was coach Oswald. He was he he, he said um, he benched him. Yeah, but um, he's like from now on, I was just going to ride the bus or, <laughs> or you know get get over there with everybody else. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so you you you, you know it, you're doing your football thing and. Um, uh, who were who were some guys that we played that were like I don't know you kind of look forward to playing or didn't look forward to playing but yeah. you're like man this I mean I know Wow was a powerhouse back then yeah um, they they always were they were they were really good um, we played my here's the thing I only got to play one year my senior year I was ineligible because. I had failed the 10th grade. Gotcha. And back then in high school, you only had four years of eligibility. Right. So, and, and I tried to use the excuse in ninth grade. I broke my collarbone. Yeah. At, at uh, football. And so I couldn't play the, the whole year. It was, I was banged up for basketball and baseball. Right. <laughs> excuse me. So I was ineligible my senior year and we, you know, tried to uh, get it through FHSA where I could be. And they said, no, we're not buying it. You got to wow. sit out. 
so I was basically a cheerleader my senior year for all the things. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Big O let me keep the books in baseball. And in my uh, annual that year, he wrote to, to the only All-State scorekeeper I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, my dad taught me the rules. He also taught me how to keep a scorebook. Right. So it was pretty good. But the teams we played, uh, we, in my year of playing football, we played four schools that were Bulldogs. Umadilla, DeVaries, Zephyr Hills, and St. Cloud. Oh, wow. We played four Bulldogs that wow. year. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. In oh, addition so. to Eustace, Eustace was always tough. I mean, yeah. they had an all-state quarterback when I played. Uh, I think his name was Ball, Robbie Ball or yeah. something like that. And um, uh, we played, you know, Claremont had a team. Groveland had a team. Right. We played them and then Wildwood. So uh, looking forward to play. I guess it was Wildwood because we always wanted to beat them. Yeah. Uh, didn't beat them while I was there. Yeah. <clears throat> but then, you know, that tide changed and the mid uh, mid eighties. Yeah. So, uh, true. When coach Sherman came in, but, uh, that was, that was way after I graduated, uh, graduated 73. And then, uh, uh, my wife and I were so smart. We didn't need any school. So we got married two weeks out of high school. So diving uh, right into life. Needless to say, uh, just had our 50 year class reunion. Yeah. And also my 50 year anniversary. Anniversary. In the same right. year. And people What's, look at me and said, How'd you do that? I said, Well, <laughs> it happens. One, one heck of a party, I might say. Yeah. yeah. But that was we, awesome. uh, you know, we, the funny thing about life, people see people do stuff. And we got married right out of high school and we had family members that said, that's never going to last. It's never going to make yeah. it. Uh, just uh, perseverance, competition. When my wife and I are so competitive, we <laughs> we don't want either one to win. Heck yeah! But uh, we were so competitive that neither one was going to quit. So we we've uh, so far been blessed with fifty years and 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 beautiful children and grandchildren and great grands. By the great way, great grands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm a great grandfather now. So it's just been great. I mean, I. I if I changed anything, I probably would have tried to finish college. Right. Uh, my dad was going to pay for my college as long as I win. He'd pay for it. He said, gotcha. you, you graduate, I'll buy you a brand new car. Yeah. No, I was too dumb to do that. Yeah. Which, am I, you know, progressing on to college, uh, I used to go to Lake Sumter Community College, community college back then with your dad and right. Preston Morgan. That. Well, they'd pick me up in the morning, drive me to school. No, I, I never rode home with them because I went off with somebody else and we did something else. <laughs> Again, that dummy of me yeah. came out and just wasn't interested. Well, in just, it's just youth. You yeah, know. yeah, and you know that. And, and then in '74, I said, "Well, you know what? I think I'm gonna join the army." Uh, my wife said, "Good." So, because she knew I was, you know, still being dumb and. Uh, 19 years old, married. So we joined the Army and uh, went into uh, 82nd Airborne. It was that station at Fort Bragg for yeah. about two and a half years after all my basic training and jump school and all that stuff. And uh, got out in 77. Yeah. And then we uh, we moved back. I'd been in Bradenton briefly and worked at Tropicana Orange Juice. So we moved back down there and we're living with uh, her sister and brother-in-law. And I worked at Tropicana, and then we got our own place. We stayed there from 77 until about 80. Uh, I used my GI Bill and did go to college. And uh, I got like 58 college credits. You know, I'm four, four or five credits away from an AA degree. And just family got in the way. Life started, and yeah. and you go to work every day. So yeah. I never did get a chance to finish. But uh I don't regret it. I don't regret it. I, I had, uh, you know, my, my, my kids coming. Uh, my son was born. Mikey was born in Bradenton mm -hmm. while we were there. And then I uh, had an opportunity to go back over to, to South Florida, where I came from. My brother-in-law and his dad owned a, a burial vault business okay. <laughs> of all jobs. Right. I became a grave digger. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in uh, October of 1980, no, September, we moved over there. And uh, we were coming back to Bradenton to get some furniture. And I got a call from my stepmom. And she said, Mike, your dad died in October 12th on my grandma's, his mom's birthday. Gotcha. He passed. And so the first grave I ever dug was my own dad right there in Webster. Oh, wow. And um, 
And that was the start of my grave digging business. And <laughs> I did that for two years down South Florida. And, uh, and then in April, July of 83, uh, I, I got out of the grave digging business, went into the propane business. Well, in July of 83, I told my wife, I said, I don't want my kids going to school in Palm Beach County. I said, I went here, wasn't very productive with it. I said, yeah. let's go back to Webster. Right. So she said, all right, let's go pack up the truck. Yeah. So we did. We packed up a U-Haul and, and moved back. Didn't have a job. Didn't have a pot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my stepmom let us move in with her, uh, Sarah, over in, in Webster. And we stayed with her for about a couple months and then found us a place to stay. And uh, got a job. And my wife was a, a hairdresser. She's the only one in my family, uh, of she and I, that has a college degree because she's a licensed cosmetologist. Gotcha. Nobody knows that. I didn't know that. She, she's been my personal barber for 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, why you look so good. Yeah, I get well, whatever. <laughs> but anyhow, moved back here and... Uh, you know, and then and then we started started our, our yeah. really our full life of of raising family and, right. and getting kids through school and getting involved and stuff. So uh, it, it was it was good. It was it was good. And living at Webster was just wonderful. I yeah. I still live there. I've been living in the same house now for thirty five years. Yeah, I was gonna say when did you buy the the old house? Yeah, about eighty eight. Eighty eight. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And uh, you know, and then you know, then you get busy with house work uh, and house yeah. upgrading, and we've redone every room in our house at least Absolutely. once, some of them twice. <laughs> Bob Bob Vila would have been proud. Yes, he would. <laughs> this whole he, house. I was a student of Bob Vila. He, yes, he could have done a, a couple episodes of <laughs> there. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and oddly enough, but I think you know this, we have a basement in my house. I did not know that, yes. but but the way it's structurally built, I, I can yeah. I can see that now. Well, it's about a four foot subfloor, right? So I can crawl underneath my house on my knees and not touch the rafters. I, I got mean, you. That's how tall it is. Gotcha. So, uh, and if you're on my back patio, if you look at those little two little windows down there, under okay, my bedroom, yep. that's the basement. Okay, now, and it's exactly the size of my bedroom, directly under I got my you. bedroom. I always thought it was like a speakeasy or something. Yeah, no. Well, my wife thinks it, my wife thinks it was a wine cellar. Well, that's what I mean. Like it, when, you, when you go down in yeah. there, there's actually a little wall. Yeah, all like, the way around all four sides. Like back in the day, like they, da, da, da. yeah. Hey, uh, what's the password? Uh, <laughs> good time. Yeah. Good time. <laughs> they, they walk in there. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, that's awesome. Now, I, I, I mean, first of all. Uh, Judy, your wife, is uh, she is very competitive. Um, yes. I learned that um, playing cards with her, which um, she is. It's either a heck of a lot of skill or a heck of a lot of luck, but uh, which I think is a little bit of both. A combination, yeah, of both. A combination yeah. of both. <laughs> but um, she's got a lot of experience. So do you. Um, and 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 uh, there are times where I mean, every time that we play cards, I, I donate money. Um, but it's, it's an, I'm in awe because you guys, it's so, you guys are so fluent. Like, you know, like I still don't know. I mean, if that beats that, you know, they give you these little cards, but I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to whip that card out and go, the cheat sheet, <laughs> you know, does that work? I mean, will this work? You know? Um, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I've known you guys all my life and, um, uh, it, it's, it's, that, like I said, your house is, is, is amazing. It's just, it's a, when you go in, it's, let me ask you about the house. Did, did they, do you think they built that in like, because it's kind of like, it's, it's in different sections. Like, it's like different. Did you add on anything or did, did the, they add on anything where it was like the, uh, the brick part is, was the original house. Gotcha. The back room that you come into, yeah. that was added on. That was okay. actually an open porch when we bought it. Okay. And we closed that in. Okay. And then uh, on our bathroom and dressing room area off of there, that was added on because it was only a one bathroom house at the time. Uh, okay. And then before we bought it, the previous owners added a bathroom okay. and a closet. And then we extended that another eight feet. Okay. Uh, after we got in there yeah. because we just needed more room. Right. So it, it has been added on to. And then of course I got the, you know, the, the man cave out back and the, and the big long pole barn now, which is great. Yeah. I got stuff out there stored up. Yep. Um, it, it, 
it's amazing how you have your stuff in the house, but gradually it finds its way outside. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All my sports memorabilia is in the, is in the game room. Here. Yeah, it's yeah. in the, it's in the studio and it's, it's, it's found its way out here. That's why Nicole had to give up the garage. Right. She was willing to give up the garage to get the crap out of the exactly. closets. Out of the house. And the gra- <laughs> 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 ah, she, yep. she, and, and, and I, I'm going to let her have it. She, that was her, all, all her idea. So, yeah. Know. Um, so tell me a little bit about the army. I'm, I'm curious about the army. How was that? It, it was, it was an experience. And, and quite frankly, I was, uh, again, even though I was married, I wasn't doing the right things and the army really matured me up. They, they right. said, you know, we're going to show you how to do it, what to do. And we're going to tell you when to do it and how to do it. Right. Um, funny story. I, I, I called in sick one day and, and the first sergeant says, uh, Actually, my wife called in and said, uh, Mike's sick today. He won't be in. He said, no, we have doctors. Send him to work. So I got there, and that first sergeant said, don't you ever call me again. I'll kill you. <laughs> so that, that was when I was at Fort Bragg. Well, I started out, I went to basic training in uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Okay. And left there and went to Fort Leonard, Missouri for AIT, AIT's Advanced Individual Training. And I learned out there uh, the basics of building houses, right? which I had already done some of that when I was a 15-year-old down in South Florida. My friend's dad was a general contractor. We used to work for him on the weekends for gas money. And so I had some basic knowledge of that. Right. But when I went out to AIT, I mean, they taught me welding, running a jackhammer, plumbing, electricity, carpentry, pipe fitting, all kinds of stuff, plumbing. Right. And, I, and I ended up graduating first in my class out there. Mm-hmm. So I said, well, this is great. Maybe I can be a contractor when I get up and yeah. get out of the Army. I uh, left there and went to jump school at Fort Benning, Georgia. And the only reason I went to jump out of airplanes was because it paid $55 a month extra. That's, that's that hazard pay. you got to get that hazard <laughs> yeah, pay. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, oh, of course, so you know, we, we in the military, you were paid monthly. So yeah. we had to figure out how to budget our mm-hmm. money to go from month to month. Yeah. And, and that $55 came in handy at the time. Yeah. Uh, my oldest girl, Kara, was born at Fort Bragg. Uh, Womack Army Hospital cost me $3.10. Oh, wow. <laughs> to have her. I bet people would like to get that bill now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that was, that was good times. Yeah. And, um. Uh, and then got out of the military, like I said, moved back to Florida and, gotcha. uh, and started our our life there. Went to college and and got through that, and then uh, eventually we're full circle back to Webster in '83. Right. Whether your water supplied by a public municipality or a private well for residential or commercial use, Purified Water Services LLC has the solutions to provide you with simply clean water. We offer a complete line of professional water filtration equipment and accessories. Soft water makes a difference you can see and feel. Water heater and appliances last longer with less maintenance. Iron and H2S filters eliminate iron stains and offensive rotten egg odors and protects your water softener equipment from iron fouling. No matter what your problem is, Purified Water Services LLC has a solution. Contact Kenny Williams at 352-446-2709. Tell me a little bit about being, that's your first child. Tell me about your, what, what, how did it feel to be a dad? It was great. Yeah. It was uh, different. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, getting up at night and walking the floor. Yeah. Feeding the baby, yeah. changing the baby, and uh, just a whole new learning process, Yeah, quite frankly. Uh, it, it, but it's something I'd never trade. Yeah. You just, you know, and, and the firstborn child is is usually the closer one. But in my case, and I can say this in all honesty, all three of mine are, are equal yeah. as far as the love goes. So I, uh, <laughs> I told uh, Judy one time, I said, well, we've got a daughter and a son. So I wonder what we'll have for our third child. And uh, we got a Lisa. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> but she's... Uh, oh, Lisa. Yeah. She's one of a kind, I'll tell you that. She's a great one, too. And I'll tell you, just a, a go-getter and a, and a fireball, everything she does, she does it full out. Right. And, uh, 
you know, of course, I can't say enough about my, my boy over there at yeah, the high school. Mikey. Wouldn't... Mikey does a great job. He, is, uh... he does a great job with our program, um, baseball and football. Yeah. Um, and, um, I mean, all three all of three the kids, they, they've been nothing but um, outstanding individuals. You know, they're, they're good people. Um, there's someone that when you see, you're like, you're, you know what I mean? You, lo- you love seeing them. Yeah. It's not like you see something you're like, <laughs> uh, tie your shoe or something. You know, <laughs> oh, hey, maybe let me you know. <laughs> you know, it's it's not awkward. You know, yeah. um, so um, you come back, and uh, of course, one of my favorite things that I, I mean, this is how I met you is um, good old baseball and Webster. Yep, yep. Um, got involved with that right away in uh, 1984. Yeah, I uh, got in there and as. A, Somehow or another, the president of the league had to leave. I think he was in the post office or something. He was a postmaster, and he got reassigned. So guess who the vice president was? This guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm Mr. President. And so I was the president wow. of the Dixie Youth League from 84 to 91 for seven years. Uh, ran the league and and just had a great experience there. I mean, we used yeah. to do barbecues on opening day. Oh, and, man, those were and the and best. <laughs> For fundraisers, those yeah. are the those are the oh, best yeah. days, man. We go uh, we go uptown and cook all night long, all night long, and then and play then, baseball. Yep, and then the next day we were out there for for opening day kickoff, and yeah, that was a great time. all day, great times. We had a good good bunch of coaches there and, and yeah. a bunch of kids that could play, yeah, and uh, just really had really had a good time. Actually, hosted a. Uh, uh, state tournament there one time in Webster. I do, I do remember that. Yep. Uh, had rain one day and had, had to have the, the the old boy, good old boys, bring their airboats out there and blow the water off the field. <laughs> that was pretty unique. Oh. So, yeah, y'all back up. We're yeah. going to blow that water out. Oh, wow. <laughs> and Daytona they did. doesn't even do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, they did in Webster, Tona. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That, I, I, you know, I've had, I've had uh, Jacinto on and Logan Brown and um, – and, and you know, even Boo Hart was talking about it. Coach Kinley, we we're all talking about how good Webster was back yeah. in the day. Just, yeah. just a, and I called it the crown jewel of baseball in Sumter County. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I really do. I really do believe that it was, it was something that you. It was like you had to be there, and it was something special to be a part of. It was. It was. It really was. Yep. And we. I, and I remember. Uh, you know those kids you just named. Uh, playing playing ball at the time, actually, Santos' dad yeah. uh, was playing there, and, yeah. and his brother, and uh, they were on the Center Hill team right. with the with the Simmons kids and yeah. all that stuff. And then uh, you know Webster Boo played for uh, for Steve Davis at T ball. Gotcha. And I was coaching T ball day, and they beat us one time, fifty to nothing. <laughs> You know, you only batted 10 batters. Yeah. Every time they batted, all 10 of them Every, scored. 10 run rule. Yeah. But to my defense, my team started out, I had mostly four year olds yeah. on my team. I had one seven year old. And I think it was uh, uh, Craig, oh. Craig Bryan. Oh. <laughs> he was the oldest one on my team. And so we got shellacked. We didn't win oh, a game for two straight years. And I thought, man, maybe I'm not cut out to be a baseball coach. <laughs> well, then the third year of T ball, when my kids all matured to yeah. you. We only lost one game. Yeah. We were 11-1 and one that year. The only team to beat us, Clayton Tyson beat us in one game. Oh, wow. And, you know, Marissa was playing for him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, he, uh, we got to coach the all-star team, and uh, that was just, you know, good times, good times. You know, uh, Coach Kenley was talking about this the other day. He, uh, he was talking about the uniforms. He's like, yeah, we had, we had our, we had our uh, top, like the baseball uniform and jeans. Yeah, and I remember I'm like I remember growing up, and I was like I never played in jeans, and it's like, and you look back further than that, and that was like the deal, like like they didn't buy pants, right? You know That's what I mean? Yep. Pants were like, I don't know, it's like our kids getting spatted. It was just something that we, if you could do it, you did. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, well, we started out the uh, the team the, the the league bought the uniforms. And they were like major league uniforms. I remember we had yeah. the Astros with the yeah. the yellow, orange, and green stripes on them. Remember oh, their old yeah, jerseys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a team that was dressed like that. And then oh, I think we funny. had the Yankees and the whoever, whoever. And it was uh, those teams. But then about the third or fourth year that I was the head of the league, we got sponsors for yeah. teams. 
and I ended up with the, uh, you know, the farmers market and like they used to have back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Farmers market and Gant Lake Baptist Church and and Rotary and all these guys yeah. would be the sponsors, and that's what went on the shirts. Right. Then. Gotcha. And and the sponsors paid for the shirts. Gotcha. So. Uh, it was it was nice, but I you know I remember Coach Kinley playing. I actually I actually wrote a letter on his behalf to Dixie Youth for him to try and get a scholarship because Dixie Youth gave a scholarship away every gotcha. year. Uh, I don't think I don't know that he got it. He might have, but I don't know that he did. But right. uh, uh, you know I remember like I say Boo Hart playing and uh, uh, Rick Shirley had a team that was always awesome. He oh, was man. a really good coach yeah. and and his kids were you know Allen and and uh, Megan Fussell playing yeah. on that team. Yeah. And uh, they were they were dominated the league. Uh, we could beat everybody else. We couldn't beat him. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I, I got to be on a lot of Rick's teams, and um, um, T ball was just it was an exceptional group. Just yeah. we had Willie Craig. Yeah, you know Allen. We had we had Steve Bass one year. We had Megan. We had um, I mean Justin Coleman. It was, right. and then you moved up, and you, that's when we got like Robert Taylor. Um, oh, who else? Uh, I remember playing with. Um, well, I, I, I remember playing against. We had a kid. My dad was talking about this the other day. Tim, Timmy, Timmy Williams, and we called him Pops. Okay, he would walk to to practice every day. Would walk, and he lived over. Over by the fossils, you know, the great near the grapevine, and he'd walk to practice, which is which was at the school, you know. So it wasn't that far of a walk, but we would have games in Center Hill, and he would walk to the games. Oh, good lord! Can you imagine a kid trying to do that now? And um, uh, I remember, well, they wouldn't do it. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, they would try, but you know, I don't think they would actually even attempt anymore. No. Um, they'd be like, well, I just ain't going, you know. But he wanted to play that bad. And uh, super tall kid, really nice kid, um, Timmy. We called him Pops because he's always late. <laughs> hey, Pops. <laughs> Here comes Pops rolling in, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, funny story about Robert Taylor and being on Rick's team one time. Rick gave me a ride home one day. And uh, and Robert Robert was sick. And he went at practice. And we're talking about practice. We're talking about practice. Okay. <laughs> practice. <laughs> and Mr. Shirley says, I'm going to ride through the back here where, where Robert was living. And we're driving down the road. And all of a sudden, here comes this horse. And Robert's on the back of the horse. <laughs> and <laughs> I remember going, oh, I wouldn't want to be on that horse right now. <laughs> and Mr. Shirley just looked at him and said, Robert, we'll see you at practice tomorrow. <laughs> and Robert is like, just talk, 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 talk. <laughs> <laughs> he knew he was going to run or he was going to do something. You know, I mean, he he's going to make it up to because he because he told him the story. You know, he, yeah. he wasn't sick. He was riding a horse. You know, he didn't want to go to practice. <laughs> just stories like that, man. I yeah. I, I, I mean. Hours and hours. Oh yes, hours. It's, but, uh, but like it's like you so said, the Center funny. Hill kids. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, just the, the the talent pool around in this area was just right. So and, so deep. Yep, yep. Um, and there's so many stories about the, the baseball. You know, uh -huh. Craig Bryan had a loose tooth one time in a dugout. My wife said, "Let me see that." Flip. She flipped his tooth out. <laughs> oh uh, we're practicing t-ball one time, and I had. Uh, uh, the oldest Collins boy, Benny Collins boy. Uh, 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 that's uh, uh, Joey. J no, no, Joey was in my group. Um, oh my gosh, I can't remember his first name, and I'm sad. That it's Ben. It's Ben Collins. Ben. ben. Okay. Well, luckily, his mom's sitting on the dugout bench watching practice. He took a bad hop right to the eye oh, <laughs> and blacked man. his eye. And I said, Marie, I'm so glad you're here to see this that I didn't do that. Yeah. She said, No, no, it was an accident. Uh, just you know, funny stories like that. I had uh, I had some good kids that played for me too. David Harrell played for me yeah. for several years. Uh, Steve Bass played for me for years. Uh, Matthew Burke, one of the best players. Oh yeah, Matt Burke. Yep. When we were in uh, Dixie Boys, thirteen yeah. years old, I think we had a thirteen game schedule that year. He got a hit in every game. Oh wow. He was he was a wow. hitting machine. 
<laughs> Mr. He, Consistent. He, yeah, yeah, he was a hitting machine and and loved to play. Yeah, loved to play. Brian Davenport, I, I coached him too. Yeah, uh, rest in soul, was in peace. And uh, he was he was a gamer. He loved to play. And, yeah. And get after it, and uh, did whatever I asked him. Pitch you, outfield. You know what's funny? You, you mentioned the the one hop. Yeah. So I was in T ball, and uh, my dad, um, my dad's coaching. Alan Shirley. It's T ball now. Alan Shirley hits a ball, and it one hops, and I'm I'm charging because I'm like you know I'm, <laughs> I I really didn't have any business being out there, but I was. I tried, you know, and uh, the it one hops and hits me, just just <laughs> clocks me. And I'm talking about there was there was spin on this ball. <laughs> oh, it wasn't a little dunk dunk dunk. It was yeah. a and and I probably then believe it or not I probably weighed probably forty something pounds. <laughs> like it almost knocked me down. Oh jeez, you know. <laughs> so you know. My dad being one of them, I'll, I'll never forget. I kind of get up like, uh, and, I, and my dad's like, "All right, he jogs out there real slow." I'm like, "Come on, man!" I'm d- I thought I'm I was dying. dying. I'm, I'm, dying. Dying. I'm dying out here, and you're jogging. Good God! Why don't you hurry up? Can you make that into a sprint? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember the kids being around, and I remember Megan Fussell doing that. Like, oh gosh, you know, I'm like, oh god, is my eyes still there? Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I've got this you know, quasi my, <laughs> my eyes hanging out of the socket, you know. Um, but yeah, those, those but Alan Shirley didn't stop there. Um, <laughs> um, he, I was my first and only year of majors. Um, he, we were in Center Hill. I got up to bat. I hated batting. I hated it. Cause I I wasn't good at it. Mm-hmm. I would rather be out in the field. I'm like, can I just like take the out or whatever and just go sit down? You know, <laughs> can I forfeit? <laughs> and um, I'm up there in the box, and and Alan hits me in the shoulder, and I was like, you know, and at that time, it felt like Roger Clemens hit me. You know, I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> what's the consolation? You get a free base. <laughs> I'm like, meanwhile, my shoulder's out of <laughs> dragging myself the first. Like, and I want to go to the dugout. <laughs> and I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, single-handedly, literally single-handedly uh, ended my career. <laughs> In the eye and said, the shoulder. Forget this crap. I'm going <laughs> need to do this. <laughs> There are certain moments in your life where you're like, you know what? That's enough. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so um, I got to I got to ask you this. I think I've asked you this before, but we're going to bring up a little Webster history here. I remember being in school one day, and this is like 80, 88, 89 school year. So I don't remember the exact like when in the, the year it was. The day that Webster caught fire, we'll say. Yeah. When the circle, November. When, the, when November, okay. So so when Circle K, so it was 88, 88, November of 88, Circle K catches on fire. Circle K slash laundromat. <laughs> and coincidentally, right behind it, 50 yards away, is the propane people, <laughs> who which you work for. We, we were in the other end of the building, yes. <laughs> Oh, all I can remember is they they brought everybody from the school into the auditorium. Yep. <laughs> Maybe so. If something happens, they had an exact body count. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I remember them saying, you know, this. They didn't want to say anything to the kids because they can rattle. But you know, there was a lot of uh, a lot of kids asking questions and stuff. And they said, "Oh, there's a fire," and they're they're not trying to make mm. it sound like a bit. It's okay, you know. Then, and then the kids are like, "Well, why are we in the auditorium?" Right. Like, if it's not a big deal, then that's like a quarter mile away. What What's that got to do with us? <laughs> well, they didn't mention the propane tanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would have probably leveled. A six block radius. It, it would have been ugly it from was, the surrounding area. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Well, yeah, and the funny thing about that one, well, not so funny. Uh, it was the laundromat on the end, then the Circle K, and then a clothing store which was full of cloth material, oh and then the propane company. We were on the other end, and then behind us was our plant. 
And uh, oddly enough, Jimmy Fussell and I were in Wildwood uh, piping, which is now the Hardy store. It was a Burger King okay. re- rebuilding. Okay. And we were doing the piping in there. We got a call said, well, you got to get back here. Our store's on fire. So we jump in our truck, pack all our tools, and we're headed back down. And I'm driving. And <laughs> Jimmy Fussell is white knuckling the doorknob and everything else because I am flying in this service truck back to Webster. <laughs> We get into town and they stopped us at the uh, where the marathon is now. Yeah. The sheriff stopped. I said, "I'm we're the propane company. We got to get there to help." He said, "Oh yeah, go by go on." Th-. So we rode down there and, and parked across <laughs> where the old Webster bar used to be. Yeah, we yeah. parked over there, and uh, and we just said every fire department station in the county was there. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, one of them was spraying water just on the propane tanks. Yeah, to keep them cool. Yeah. There was a 500-gallon tank down behind the laundromat that one of them was spraying water on that so it wouldn't blow up. And the rest were spraying water on the building. Wow. But it was just, it was it was awful. It yeah. was awful. Come to find out, apparently there was a wiring shortage in the ceiling over the Circle K that was, according to the fire inspector at the time, right. was the cause of the, of the fire. Wow. <laughs> that was, uh, I mean, everybody in the county knew about that. Yeah, it, it, was, it was, it was crazy. I mean, it was like I said, we were at school. I was, I, I was in first grade. I remember like, like it was like it was yesterday. Yep. And yep. Um, they were, they were, like I said, they wouldn't tell you to to not create s- such chaos, but you, you kind of figured out when you saw the smoke. Yeah. Outside, and you're like, oh wow, what's like, you know, you're trying to add this up. You're you're seven years old. You're like, yeah. It, when it becomes a physics problem, like uh, <laughs> I, I can barely do <laughs> math. Like <laughs> I can write my name. <laughs> I've got to learn and learn how to do this uh, equation here. Um, yeah, but that was something I'll never forget. And, yeah. and I know you were involved with that because um, that was yeah. that was you guys, um, yeah. not the fire, but the people. But the, the you know what could have been right, right. Um, and that. Uh, that's what prompted our move over to Bushnell with the gas company. Yeah. Was that burning down? We actually relocated to uh, that little building down there next to the old farm supply. Okay. Crossed, crossing the market. Gotcha. We moved in there as a temporary office for probably maybe a year. Yeah. Because we had to find property to right. buy, and we ended up buying this property that's right down there uh, at the end of the road, Palm Avenue, from the bus garage. Right. That little gas case. Okay. Place, that's okay. where we moved. We built that building. Okay. And we uh, moved our gas plant over, and I was involved in all of that stuff. Gotcha. And then, uh, you know, then I started working out of that office there. Gotcha. So it was, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty devastating. We, yeah. You know, we lost a lot of our records we lost of our, of our propane customers. Right. But luckily, we had them in a like an old manual file folder. I mean, there's no computers. Yeah. And and the files had been closed that afternoon. At lunchtime, the girl that was working there closed them for some reason. And so being pressed together, the edges were burned. So we were able to recoup uh, a lot of our a lot of our accounts payable and due. Uh, um, so no free gas for most people. So well, <laughs> quite frankly, we had about twenty twenty seven thousand dollars on the books. Oh, and almost everybody that owed us money paid us. Wow, it was amazing. Wow, <laughs> they wow. you know they could have said no, we don't know you. Oh bill. yeah, 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 yeah. But they came in and paid. Yeah, after we got Absolutely. resettled uh, and established that little yeah, part time w- office. Yeah, and 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 I was astounded. I said, man, you know. People are really good. Yeah, yeah, really good. They owed us money. They knew it. They came oh yeah, man. It was it was a like I said, it was a different time back then. It was just it was like like I I I'd say this all the time. And I don't I don't want to sound like that guy, but you know you always hear when we were growing up that you hear people say, "Oh, back in the day, we're so good." Well, yeah, to a certain point because mm-hmm. you didn't have things that you have now. Um, that make things easier, but it was simpler. And like we're talking about the baseball and stuff like that, it Webster was what it was, but we made the best of it. And we just thought it was the greatest thing on, you know, ever. I mean, I I still do. I mean, there's tons of people that think that, but, um, I don't know. Just like some people just, 
they they put too much back in the past. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it wasn't all that good. Do you know what I'm saying? There were things that we oh, it was we, hard we, times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't perfect yep. by any means. But but what I'm saying is is people have moved on to different things. And um, you know, think about think about what if we had a cell phone back in '88 when that happened. <laughs> How many people we could probably have that fire out quicker? Oh yeah, than what we did with what we had. You right. know what I'm saying? And the so, land lines, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's not all um, that great, but but um, I guess because it was just it was just basically innocence when we were a kid. You know, you think about you didn't have any responsibilities, you didn't have any. You know, there wasn't stress. Yep. You know. Yep. Unlike being married at 19 and <laughs> with a kid on the way and. Or well, the Kara came how how two years oh, later. Two years later, yeah. but still, you were a twenty year old, right? Trying to make life de- you know decisions when yep, yep. when you can barely. I know I'm speaking for myself, and I could barely figure out what I wanted to eat that day. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those <laughs> things. It's not like it's a. I mean, that's a life. <laughs> it's a big deal, you know. Absolutely. Um. So, um, how many years did you put in the uh, gas gas company? Uh, right at 30. Right at 30? Right at 30. We had, uh, well, I started there with Public Gas, and we moved over here, and then we got bought out. I had the same job the whole time Yeah, as a manager. Oh, okay. But we kept getting bought out by different companies, right. so I kind of moved from here to there. And right. I, I stepped out away for one year, uh, thought I wanted to do something different, and it didn't like it, and I got a job back at the property appraiser's office. Right. Uh, worked for Ronnie Hawkins for almost a year. Okay. And... Uh, <laughs> a friend of mine called me that was still in the business. Right. And uh, she said, hey, there's a, a manager's opening in Orlando if you're interested. I said, really? She said, yeah, you had to go to Lakeland and interview. So I I took the half a day off, went down there and interviewed. And, and the guy said, uh, he said, yeah, I think I could use you. <coughs> so I came back, told Ronnie, I said, uh, you know, this guy, I have an opportunity to double what I'm making here. Right. I said, and get back into the business. I really know. He said, no problem. Yeah. Go whenever you need to go. Yeah, very and I think I was there like three or four more days and I left yeah. and went to my new job. So I gotcha. uh, ended up about 30 years total in the propane business. And, uh, you know, Ronnie was very gracious to let me go without a two week notice. Yeah. And of course he replaced me just like that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But anyhow, that, I, I, and I like that job too. That honestly, that was probably the best job I ever had. Really? We had every federal holiday. We were closed. <laughs> we, that had is like, nice. we had like 11 holidays during yeah. the year. We used to get a shopping day in December and our birthday off. <laughs> so, Oh wow. You know, and, and then you accumulate vacations. Sick right. Time. Right. I said, man, this is a great job. But I left it after a year. I just, you know, that that really, I like doing it. Yeah. But it wasn't what I wanted to do for a career. Right. And so uh, we're back in the gas business. Um, going back to uh, uh, baseball, not to really change subjects, but kind of. Going back to baseball, I was curious, what what, what position did you play? Did you? Um... I, I was uh, played first base and I played outfield. Okay. As a, as a younger kid. Gotcha. Um, and then as I got older. In I high school? Up, yeah. High school, I was a backup first baseman to David gotcha. Simmons. Okay. And then, and then I played in the outfield with your dad. And uh, uh, it was uh, – that was the best place for me. Yeah. I thought I was a pitcher. <laughs> Not a pitcher. We all we all think we're pitchers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no I doubt. remember we played at the old field on the old football field yeah. at the old high school. And right behind home plate was a light pole. Didn't shine lights on the field, but it, it was a light pole that shined a light on the street. Well, I got put in the game one time. Big O said, yeah, I need you to throw an inning. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if your dad will remember that. <laughs> Just a bit outside. Just a bit outside. It went all the way back, hit the light pole, and came right back to home plate. <laughs> And that light pole was 15 feet by. <laughs> oh my God. It was, I was awful. I uh, couldn't, oh no. You were aiming for the corner and missed. Yeah. Now I know the fundamentals of pitching yeah. and how you're supposed to pitch. Yeah. I just couldn't do Not it. Not that day. The, yeah. <laughs> Not ever. <laughs> didn't have the physical ability to be a pitcher. Oh. Uh, but I had the good pleasure of coaching some that were good. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a great part of my life. One of the highlights of my life was my coaching. 
especially at South Sumter. Yeah. You know, that's a dream come true to coach at your alma mater. Well, tell us a little bit, a little I, bit about that. Yeah. Well, and I looked into that. Uh, the year that I got out of the gas business was because we got bought out again, and the new owner said, we don't have a job for you. Oh, yeah. So I said, okay. So I took my severance package and left. Well, as luck turned out, uh, Miss Langford was retiring at the bus garage. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rick had talked to me about it earlier that year. And I said, well, I might think about it. Well, now I was thinking about it because I needed a job. So in July, I got let go from the gas company. And I got hired as the new transportation chief at the bus garage. Well, then oddly enough, when school started, the head baseball coach resigned and went to work for Grain. That was uh, Fred Pop. Okay. <laughs> he went to work for Granger. <clears throat> so uh, Coach Sherman called me and said, hey, we're looking for a baseball coach. Are you interested? I said, are you kidding? So uh, three three of us went in there and, and talked to them about baseball. Myself, uh, Brian Simmons, and John uh, Mike Eastburn. Okay. Sat in there, talked to Doc Morgan and and uh, Coach Sherman. And so they interviewed us, and they were talking to us, and, and fortunately enough, I got selected to be the head coach. I don't know. I, and Brian had been head coach yeah. previously for right. a couple of years and won a district championship. Uh, but for some reason, they gave me the opportunity. And uh, I'll tell you what, about being blessed as, as a baseball coach. With the kids that I had, yeah. it, it was it was phenomenal. You know, when you come in behind a icon like Charles Oswald, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I had some notes here about about him. He was uh, the head coach from 1971 to 1997, won 365 games and lost 263, and had one tie. Oh wow! So, and uh, ten district championships, three regional championships, one state runner-up, which I was a, a witness to. By the way, remember they played? Well, you don't remember? It was in '78. No, I wasn't they, around. Yet. They played on the baseball field at Webster. Oh, that was where okay. they played that state championship. Okay. And uh, Fort Pierce, John Carroll out of Fort Pierce, I think it was John I. Carroll, came up here and and beat us six to four. Oh, I wow. believe was the score of the game. You look back through the archives. But uh, Oswald was uh, uh, the 1978 Florida High School Coach of the Year right. for that performance that he had as being the, the runner up in the state of Florida. That's awesome. For baseball, for yeah. the classification. Yeah. I mean, just – and he had good players over the year. But he was – Charles Oswald was brilliant. Yeah. He was a great strategist. And he, you know, he rolled the dice sometimes yeah. and, and, and lucked out yeah. and, and did well. And uh, of course, I did the uh, you know I did the same thing. I got to be the coach there for eight years until I retired in 2020. And uh, I was blessed with some of the best players that ever came through that school. Yeah. I mean, they just uh, I ended I, we my kids won 124 games and lost 57 in oh, eight wow. years. Wow! And, and <laughs> they were they were uh, one district runner up. Two district championships, one regional championship, one regional runner-up, right, and then a Final Four appearance in 2015. I remember that year. Yeah, yeah. that was that was a phenomenal team. Yeah, that was a, that was a a gang of guys right <laughs> oh, there. Oh, geez, yeah. it was. And uh, you know, and, and two of the best players uh, that I ever coached, obviously uh, Isaiah Cullum and Cinto Arredondo. Yeah. They were. They, uh, Isaiah was a senior. Along with Quentin Morrison, Trenton Upshaw, uh, Jalen Dorsey, uh, but then we had a great bunch uh, of lower grade kids that were in there. That's when I had that freshman class that yeah. had won that World Series mm-hmm. at Bushnell with uh, Eastburn and and the other Aaron Dondo and and. Tadlock and yeah, I was Adams say, and Tadlock. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, and uh, there was just a, a slew of those guys too. But we had Mo James, was Jalen's younger brother. Oh yeah, yeah, under, yeah, uh, uh, big Mo, Debo Grant. Was yeah, probably one of Debo. the best athletes wow. ever. Come to. <laughs> I love and, Debo. Uh, yeah, and we just had, a, you know, Matt Todd was a great uh, relief pitcher for yeah. us and helped us get to that Final Four that year. Uh, uh, Matt, Matt Todd's dad works with us now. He, uh, Henry. Is that right? He works at maintenance with us now. Okay. Yeah, he's okay. a nice guy. Never, oh, he just retired from the prison, didn't mm-hmm. he? Okay. Never, never, I didn't really know him that well. And then I said, I got to talking to him, and he's like, yeah, my son played football. Who's your son? And he's like, I didn't even know Henry's last name. Yeah. And um, 
and he said, uh, Matt Todd. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I love Matt Todd. Yeah. Played football and baseball. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. But uh, those those kids were just phenomenal. And, and just, uh, you know, I looked at some of the stats just the other day when I knew I was going to come and talk to you. Uh, in, in the four years from uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah. with that freshman class we had and those other supporting role guys. Right. We won 81 games in four years. Oh, wow. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is impressive. <laughs> and yeah. uh, we, had, uh, we had a team batting average Yeah. Uh, over 300 all four years. But one year, we had a team batting average of 345. Wow. I mean, you just don't that's, get that. Yeah, that's not, yeah, that's <laughs> not common. Get, no. 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 And then, uh, of course, you know, the, the big year, 2015, uh, Isaiah Cullum and Cinder and Dondo were the, were the one-two punch on the mound. They were – it seemed like every time they suited up, they yeah. were ready to play. Right. <laughs> Isaiah had a game that year. First four games of the year, he had 12 at-bats. He had eight hits. Oh, wow. In 12. <laughs> he was hitting like 800 after four games. And uh, in one of those games, I believe it was in the fourth or fifth game, we played uh, St. John's Lutheran out of – Ocala, mm-hmm. which had been in the state playoffs the year before. Right. They might have been Final Four the year before. But I called the guy. I said, look, I want to play the best teams I can. Yeah. He said, would you want to play me? Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. They came down here. Well, our bats were hot as fire that night. We beat them like 24 to 1. Oh, my God. Isaiah hit for the cycle. Oh, Never had wow. another kid do that. Wow. And his home run was a grand slam. <laughs> Yeah, he had like eight RBIs in that game. So he really got a cycle. Like yes. he got the cycle. Single, double, triple. Yeah, homer. Yes, but the did. homer was a grand slam, yeah. which is yeah. Hard. <laughs> yeah, really cool. Just forget not forget the cycle itself. Just right. the grand slam, right. the but, odds. Yeah, but everybody in the lineup had right. base hits that night. And right. we just, I mean, it was great. Oh man! And, and then oddly enough, when we went up there to play, yeah, we played a five inning, ten to nothing, no hitter by Cento. Arredondo. Yeah. <laughs> he threw a no hitter against him. So, and, and that was his junior year. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I just, I just can't say enough about that team. They were yeah. so, so good. Yeah. Uh, example of the, the next three years following Diego Arredondo and Nathan Eastburn probably struck out 10 times between them in three years. Wow. They were just had great eye. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eye on the ball and, and, Really, really good. Lindsay Vanderwall Photography offers natural light photography for any occasion. With over 10 years of experience in the industry, we promise you professionalism and quality photography always. Affordable pricing for weddings, sports, family, and senior sessions. Contact today to book. Yeah. We, we went up to uh, Trenton and played uh, Diego's junior, senior year, and uh, he pitched. Yeah. Threw an eight nothing shutout. Right. Uh, maybe got one hit. Yeah. And they had that Wyatt Langford kid on their team at oh, Trenton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I'd coach uh, call Coach Hall. I said, "Hey, we want to play you guys because they'd been in the playoffs a couple of years. He's the one that beat us my first year in thirteen in the first round of playoffs. He was at Willison that year okay. and beat us two to nothing. Gotcha. And so I contacted him and said, look, I want to play you guys. Yeah. He said, no problem. We go up and beat him eight nothing. He, he didn't like it very much. But <laughs> But then when they came down here, we won again. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'll tell you another thing I was blessed with the whole eight years I was coaching was a PA announcer. I had Mark Johnson as my PA announcer for yeah. eight straight years. And you just don't get that. Oh, you know, yeah. He was dedicated to it. He was ready for game time. Right. Uh, you know, he would play walk-up songs for the kids and stuff like that. Yeah. And, of course, they ate that up. You know, oh, everybody's yeah. got to have their walk-up yeah. music. Yeah. And uh, it's like in the big leagues, yeah, yeah, yep. and just you know, with his the way he does announcing football now, he was yeah. just as phenomenal with the baseball games, yeah. I, I think um, a lot of people we uh, I mean, we have him do a lot of stuff for us like that, and then they people don't realize how great he is, yeah. And like when, when I had him on, when I asked him to be on the podcast, he was like. What are we going to talk about? And I'm yeah. like, are you serious? Yeah. Dude, you're, you're like, you he had, missed his calling. I know. I'm like, he I'm should like, have applied for Deckerhoff's job. I was like, yeah. He's like, you, you just, just leave it up to me. You yeah. let, let me worry about that. Yeah. And we had a, we had a great time. Um, a, a lot of people don't realize, um, how awesome 
that they're I, I don't this is sound wrong I don't people don't realize how awesome their experiences in life really are until they start to actually talk about them yeah they might think about it and they go no nah, that sounds stupid yeah. but then you got but but nobody how do you know unless you tell somebody right, right. so I love telling stories about about situations I don't care if it's something that embarrasses myself I don't care mm-hmm. it's because I think it's hilarious and it's gonna I'm sure it hasn't happened just to me sometimes I feel like I'm the only one that's ever happened to <laughs> but <laughs> but I mean how do you know till you till you do it you right. know right but going back to what you said about uh, baseball, um, when I was talking to Jacinto, he was telling me how he, his dad wanted to be a catcher, like really bad. Like you're a catcher, he's like, man, I want to pitch. Nah, nah, you're gonna be you're gonna be catcher. Yeah. And then he wanted to do it so bad that he focused on that craft so well that he became that's what he that's what he went into the big leagues for. Right. You know. Right. Nothing against um, Big Cento. I'm just saying he thought. That's what he should do. And, you know, we've done that so many times where you should play this. No, no, no I want to play that. And you think, well, you're not, you're, you're, you have that mentality like, you're not ready for that. Yeah. But that makes him, how much of that that he said made him want to work harder to be better at pitching? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I think it's a good thing that people tell people that all the time, like, look, you're not ready. You know? Um, one of my favorite things is, I don't know, this is going to sound weird, but American Idol one time, okay, and they had Lionel Richie. love Lionel Richie. He said, he told this girl, he's like, you're not ready yet. She's like, what? She's looking like, I just killed this song. He's like, look, did the same thing when I was with the Commodores. We went to this talent show, and we were not ready. And he said, we went back, we worked 10 times harder, and that made us who we are said if we hadn't have done that and we just kept going there's no telling where we would be right now yeah but because i went back and we fixed some things and we worked hard on this and got all the kinks out that's what made us who we are yeah and i'll never forget i mean i mean and it was cool that he shared that with her look i'm not just saying no because i don't think you're good i'm just saying you're not ready no and a lot of people don't want to hear that. Yeah, exactly. They don't want to hear you're 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 not ready. It's not ready. But how many times have we been told that in life with situations where we think we're gonna go do this? No, no, no. It's not not yet. No. That I, I believe that I believe that's the way the good Lord works. Is hey, you're not it's not not time yet. Not time yet. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So you, you just need you need a little bit more time and then we'll see. But right now you're not ready. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So I think it's a yeah. I think it's a cool a cool uh you know cross you there to think about. But um those guys were just amazing. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, this is awesome. Yeah. Well, it, you know, a, a short story in, in 2016 when Cinda was a senior and uh he was going to be my my number one. He was my guy on the mound. But he also was going to catch when the other guys were pitching cuz right. he was the best at that time. Right. And so, uh, of course, he could also play first and third. So <laughs> I had a lot of options with him. Yeah. But we were playing uh, the first game of the year. We played Bishop McLaughlin. And we went down there to their field. And it was probably 35 degrees. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it was awful. And we got beat eight to nothing. <sighs> and Sinto took the loss. And he hated it. Yeah. <laughs> he said, Coach. I'm never doing that again. Yeah. Because he, we weren't ready. It wasn't warm. Yeah. Our team wasn't ready. We we're talking about the cold. I said, guys, we're in the same cold they're in. Yeah. And so, anyhow, we lost that game. And, and then our kids said, we're done. Yeah. They won 14 games in a row. And into the tournament over in Hernando, that uh, Farm Bureau tournament they mm-hmm. have every year. And in uh, those games, in the second game, we played Central. And in the seventh inning, top of the seventh, we took the lead. Well, I'm at third base coaching when that run went across the plate. And I see over my dugout, Cento, and our catcher takes off to the bullpen because he wasn't pitching that game. Takes off to the bullpen. And when I after the inning was over, the half inning, and I come over there, Cento comes down and said, Coach, I'm going to pitch. I said, all right, go get him. <laughs> he 
comes in there, pitches the three batters because we took the lead seven to six. Yeah. Pitches the three batters, game over. Wow! And right there, I knew that kid was going to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he had that that want to mm-hmm. and that desire. Absolutely. <laughs> Excuse me, and I knew he was going to be special. Yeah. In the in the next level, right? And, and he was. Yeah. And so. Uh, that was that was a, a really a, a telling point for me in that year, right? When he uh, when he did that, yeah. And it was just it was really nice to see him do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And I knew that uh, that his pitching was going to be his uh, forte, Ticket. right? Yeah, and, his and, his way in, right? Yeah. Absolutely, exactly. absolutely, <laughs> exactly. So, um, uh, of those of those eight years I coached, we had a, a one season we were 500, 13, 13. And then my my uh, our only losing season was COVID. We were three and five yeah. when COVID hit in twenty twenty. Well, and we yeah, got they, shut down. Yeah, they got cut short. <laughs> but I'd like to think we were going to turn out. I mean, I had Royce there and Dondo and yeah. and that group in there, and and they were they were good. They were going to yeah. be good, and unfortunately got shut down. Alexander like Eastburn was on that team, and uh, we just. Just got shut down, and yeah. I said, "Well, it is what it is." And then, of course, I retired. Well, you know, the thing about that was that when COVID hit, twenty twenty was for high school athletes. It was just that was the end. Yeah. For 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 spring athletes. Yep. But college, it could come back if they wanted to. Right. You know, they right. had that fifth year option. Yep. I know you can't do that in high school, but I mean, how many guys? I mean, it wasn't just our guys, but how many kids got just. They just got robbed. Man. They robbed of their they, senior year. They literally year. got robbed their senior year, man. Yeah. And I know, I know how how important that senior year is. Like, just I, I know, just having a normal senior year, you think about it a lot. Like, I think about my senior year all the time. I, I, mean, I don't know why, but I think about. I mean, I guess because I work for the school school board, and like the, these times of the year, I remember it, I, it. It it comes back. I go, oh, we were. About this time, we were getting ready for graduation. About this time, blah, blah, blah. This time, we were on a senior, senior trip. This time, blah, blah, blah. This is, they're getting ready for prom. Oh, oh, prom. Going back, having flashbacks. <laughs> prom. Even though it was some time ago, you it, it never does leave. Like, yeah. it's always there. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing how just the littlest thing can trigger. Like It's like music. You can hear music. Mm-hmm. And I remember, oh, my gosh, I was... I was here. I was working here. This happened. That's why. That's why everybody can tell you where where they were on nine eleven. Yep. Not just because of the horrific things that happened, but because of the media. They, it just it was embedded in your brain that you were. I was here. I was there. I, I was doing this. I was with so and so. Yeah. We were here. We were talking about this. Yeah. It very very. Very, very surreal. Like, it's just one of those things. It's Correct. Very, it's, it's, Correct. It's, it's crazy. Yep. Thanks for watching part one of this two-part segment. Stay tuned for part two.